Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have a remarkable game to share with you. On the white ends, we have a specialized version of Leela Night Odds. So this is Leela trained specifically with the starting position where there is no knight. No king knight in this case for this game. It was trained on a very powerful and expensive graphics card in RTX 4090. It's also running on this card for this game. Time controls 15 minutes with a 10 second increment. Leela's opponent, Grandmaster Alex Lenderman, a player who has been as high rated as 2650 FIDE. Okay, let's see what Leela's plan of attack is. Some wild stuff right out of the gates with G4, looking to bother the King Knight once on its favorite square. What's the Grandmaster's plan, or really any human's plan for a game of this type? An odds game? Let's simplify. Trade as much as possible, make life easier on us. There's not going to be as much to calculate with fewer pieces. Well, easier said than done. Black here securing c6 against any possible doubling of the c pawns. Interesting moment now. We have d4. So if I'm playing as black here and I see d4, one of the thoughts I'd be having is you know what? I'm up a knight and a pawn. And now you're giving me an opportunity to trade off one of my doubled pawns for one of your center pawns? Okay. That is what black goes for. We have C takes D on Passan. And now queen takes. This is maybe one of the first uh, positions in this game that grabbed my attention. Uh, we're going to see as the game plays through, uh, Lila kind of gains... Little by little, just inch by inch. And this is the first inch I noticed with this game. And that is the queen positions. The white queen, we can already know, has much greater freedom of movement. Okay. King knight developed. Sure enough, kicked right away. And after knight d5, white does not take on d5. Keep in mind, white is down a knight and pawn. In this game, it is rook d1. Why not? take away on the d5 square. We do have three attackers, one defender. Well, maybe that's trading too much. If the position becomes too opened, maybe it's much easier for white to, or excuse me, for black to pursue peace exchanges and simplify. So white says, no thanks. I don't want to take on d5. Black continues here with bishop to d6. If black takes on c3, queen will most certainly recapture and exert pressure on g7. It starts to already become a little bit difficult for black to easily complete development. As soon as the bishop moves, g7 would hang. So this tension here simply remains. It's bishop d6. White goes hunting now for the dark square bishop. Black is fine with this. Simply completing development step away black is from castles now knight takes bishop so this guy here now a very dangerous piece an unopposed dark square bishop from here it's e4 knight b6 and a4 look at this space already one pawn in black's house and soon we're going to have another black in this position plays e5 if black wants to prevent a5, playing a5 himself, well, this knight is a bit vulnerable. Maybe the bishop, maybe the queen could target this vulnerable point. Black simply carries on with e5, has his eye on the d4 square. This is a hole, and this knight is ready to hop into it. There's not much white could do about a knight dropping into that square. a5. Space invader pawns, and do you see what just happened? Look at this knight on c8. Notice how Leela has already managed to find a way to inconvenience one of Black's pieces. Uh, Leela started without a knight, but and Black has an extra knight, but how good is that extra knight when it's on its back foot here on c8? And you could even go one step further. With this knight on c8, look at how it's interfering with the queen rook. So it's kind of like black is not playing with these two pieces for the moment. 
Okay, a nice maneuver coming up here by Leela. I really like this uh, shifty queen move. We have queen b3. Targeting a sensitive point. It's defended with bishop to e6. Queen has b7 covered. Queen is hit. But what's the point? Why invite this bishop to what appears to be a better square e6? Well, check this out. We have queen g3. The knight hops into d4. And now we have this exchange sacrifice. Knight just has to go. Not working around it. There was a threat as well on e2. Notice with the bishop on e6, now after these pawns get rolling, in comes f4, there's now going to be a nice little tempo against that bishop now that it's on e6 rather than d7. Okay, taking stock of this position, we're no longer working with uh, a knight difference. Leela is down a rook. But these guys are pretty menacing, to be sure. They continue to roll. f5 on board. Bishop c4. Dark square bishop pinning down this knight. Otherwise, d6 is going to fall. So black still backed up here with the queenside pieces. Black castles. We have h4. Getting off of any... Uh, getting out of any pin here on the g-file. Now it's time for the rook to play. Uh, one of the thoughts I had here, you know, uh, thinking what black may want to do instead of, let's say, king to h8, if, let's say bishop e2 with then this idea of d3, that may mean this rook could enter on the seventh rank in a timely, uh, there, there might be a timely rook c7 move. Black's plan with this bishop in this game is to uh, go to the c6 square. It does a good job of exerting pressure on e4 and cutting out any possible entry on the c7 square. Okay, king h8 in this game, rook d1, d3, bishop is hit, bishop b5, g6. These pawn, the, the pawn play by Leela is really impressive. What do you do now? If you end up taking on g6 in the game, it's h6. If you take on g6, you're really asking for this idea. Checkmate on h7. The bishop, uh, now that it's on b5, not around to secure uh, this h7 square. This would be way too scary to make a capture on g6 here. Black's idea is to keep things closed. He plays h6 here. And after queen to e3, yeah, we know it's coming. And there isn't really much black can do about this sacrifice. <laughs> okay, bishop c6, sure enough. Sacrifice on h6. And we have b4, timely kick of the bishop, maybe rook c7. All right, that's shut down with a6. Also, this knight now has a square. Does make use of this a7, b5 idea. But these guys are gaining steam Past G pawn, past H pawn, another one ready to be established on the sixth rank soon enough. Knight finally getting into action here. So is the rook. But these guys are activated, right? Much better than the knight on C8, rook on A8. But what are they really doing? The knight on B5 under control by the rook. The rook on C8 doesn't really see with the bishop on C6. Black is not in a position to take away on e4 because you're going to be getting mated on h7. And there is a storm brewing on the king's side. Look at all this stuff. Queen's ready to move. H-pawn's ready to go. Difficult position here for Team Black. No queen exchange. Pressure on e4. Now a fancy queen maneuver here. We have queen a2 check. King h8. Queen b2, hinting at h6, deflecting the queen away from f6. That's shut down with rook to e5. Notice this next move. Takes advantage of the weakness here. The rook on c8 is unprotected, so now we have queen c1. Pinning the bishop. No good forward moves for the bishop now. And she also supports h6. Beautiful queen play here. 
huge difference between the queens. Again, the freedom of movement between the queens. From here, it's the doubling on the E file, H6, Queen E7, and after Queen C4, Lenderman, under five minutes at this stage, ends up blundering, calculating at this stage, I imagine, and maybe a capture on E4, or maybe a D5 move. Computer says you could play D5 here. A big blunder made at this stage with uh, these two pawns right next to the king ends up playing rook to g8. Uh, the problem with taking on e4 here is that white could push and push again and get a new queen. So the idea, I imagine, in Lenderman's mind with rook to g8 is to try and blockade, but there's a huge tactical sequence he missed. Leela is still able to play g7 here with check, and after king h7, a queen sacrifice. With the follow-up h7 check, king takes pawn, here comes the new queen, and after king h6, this one goes straight to mate. 43 moves. Now, some interesting notes with this one. This whole game for Leela took less than 50 seconds. All the moves played by Leela, less than 50 seconds. That's on average 1.1 seconds a move. This is really remarkable. Uh, what are your thoughts with this one? Anyhow, feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.